$100 million signing bonuses, equity deals out the wazoo. People get so caught up in the Mark Zuckerberg looks like a lizard thing <laughs> that they lose sight of what an unbelievably good entrepreneur he is. I think that this is a very shrewd move by somebody who completely understands what's going on in AI, who saw that he was falling behind, what they were doing on the open source side, wasn't getting the adoption that they were hoping it was. He was able to go and attract talent. One of the most important things that you do as a CEO is attract talent. And if you can't attract talent, you're gonna stall out. So seeing what Zuckerberg has done here is pretty extraordinary. Amen. Even though he's throwing money at it, even with money, it's not as easy as you would think it is. At the end of the year, who do you think is going to be AI top dog? It won't be one dominant player because by the end of the year, we will not have AGI. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have like that fast acceleration and somebody really steps ahead. So it's going to be on different things. Mm -hmm. Right now, VO3 was so transformative from a media perspective mm -hmm. that I give Google the edge there. What they're doing with Flow is very innovative. That will be the one generating the most revenue. That will be the one that the most people use. Still, I think that custom Laura's is probably the real thing. Like when I look at what we actually do to create the stuff for Project Kaizen, that's, we have to do custom stuff. You're not getting things off of a VO3 shelf just cause it can't mimic your characters. AI reels and things like that for companies that wanna do like a straight down the middle commercial type thing. VO3 is probably gonna be your player, VO4 or five, whatever it is by then. In terms of just everyday usage, I think that open AI is still gonna be the dominant player. We'll see if there's been enough brain drain from um, what Meta just did, but I doubt it. From a what gets the most usage, I think what Meta's doing is gonna need more than a year to really gain traction. But I could see in the next three years, given that they're focused on an open source thing, everybody, if they really can make that step function in the next, call it six to eight months, you could get a lot of people that go, oh, I'm gonna build on the back of Meta. That's what we were planning to do. So one of the things I'm trying to integrate with Kaizen is I want an external toy that matches this pet that we call Codename Exotics. I don't know what the final thing will be, but mm -hmm. inside the game, there'll be like these little pets called Exotics. You set them up kind of like tower defense. They help protect your base. I want you to be able to have a relationship with them in game, out of game. We were gonna build that on Llama. If they can make the step function, cause I think everybody knows, I just have a little distrust for anything coming out of China. So I'd like to avoid deep seek if I can, mm -hmm. but we'll use whatever's cutting edge. I hope that Llama can get there because then we can run it natively ourselves. If they can pull it off, there are tons of people like me that are like, yes, please, that would be great. And then now you build for everything in their ecosystem. And so obviously that's a huge win for yeah. them. You didn't mention Grot. Your boy. Grok could be a dark horse. We'll see. The only thing I use Grok for is like, if I want to find out what's going on in culture, I'll go to Grok. It's very fast. It's tied into X. When I'm writing, I very rarely use X. If I want like a lot of details added to an outline, sometimes I'll use X or Grok. But the honest answer is I've learned ways to do it inside of ChatGPT and I just prefer ChatGPT. The one thing that I will use Grok for is it really does seem to optimize better than anybody else for this is true true or not. ChatGPT will give me a fact and sometimes I'll be like, there's no way this seems too crazy. I'll go to Grok and be like, is the following statement true? And then I'll just paste in what ChatGPT told me and it does an incredible breakdown of oh, there's actually three claims with inside of this. Here's how you would have to interpret this for that to be true, blah, blah, blah. So like one of the facts in my deep dive, the US economy is bigger than China, Japan, and Germany combined. And I was like, that's obviously a hallucination. So I went to X and I was like, is this true? And it's like, yes, this is true. If what you're talking about is nominal GDP, which is the most common way that things are compared, you're gonna get that kind of breakdown from X and you're gonna get it very fast. I just don't know that Elon's gonna be able to make it relevant enough. I don't know, it just lacks that je ne sais quoi. Three years, now it's like the Peter Thiel principle of never bet against Elon starts to come into play, but I think it's going to take him some time. Mark Andreessen had a good take on the future of AI, Let's and it's go. not just LLMs. So I want God, to I jump into this. Guy. Today, AI is software, but there's another turn on AI that's coming, which is the turn to embodied physical AI, which is robotics. This is a transition that has already happened in drones, uh, where drones went from being human piloted to actually being autonomously piloted. They now fly themselves. It's a transition that's happening in cars right now. It's amazing to live in a cyberpunk future reality where you're in literally a state of the art self-driving car that's literally out of the jets and is driving past people who are dying of fentanyl overdoses on the sidewalk. I recommend having the experience at least once. What is crazy is sci-fi writers get so much right about the future that I'm always like, man, like there really is something about the vision of a cyberpunk future has always been that you'll get these incredible 
technological advancements, mm -hmm. but they will come at the cost of just this insane inequality. Until I started actually learning about economics, I could never understand why that was always the future. Why wasn't it solar punk? But that cyberpunk reality is coming true. Hopefully it's short lived, but it is fascinating that people could see that. I mean, they were writing this stuff back in the eighties, man. Yeah. Robots are gonna be everywhere. Uh, farming, all of the labor that we think we need from immigrants. And you know, in a short term, I'm sure that there is some utility from that. I just saw a broccoli picker. Yeah. It was crazy. It's just, again, it can work 24 seven. Like it just does its thing. I don't think people fully understand how many forms robots are gonna take, how many of them they are going to be, how much you're going to rely on them. Wait until they put the fields on big moving platforms and they start bringing the crops to the machines. Shit is wild. That is true. Like there are gonna be things that we can't even imagine right now like, oh God, I forget who was talking about this. It might've been Senator Massey. He's an electrical engineer by trade and he built himself a chicken coop that moves. So the chickens get to like eat all the different grass, but they're also protected from, you know, coyotes mm -hmm. and stuff. The more important thing is if AI cannot figure out the laws of physics, we are in trouble. Uh, your media is never gonna be as good as it could be because if it understands the laws of physics now, it's more like working inside of a game engine where you can tell this is what I want. It gives it to you, but then it gives it to you in a way that you can edit the variables. So if you can get to that point, oh my God, Drew, it will be unreal. First of all, if it understands the laws of physics, presumably it could do breakthroughs in physics. That would be insane. What that will mean for medical science will be mm -hmm. just unbelievable. Now I'm optimistic about the body that you can go a really long way even without it understanding the laws of physics because the body is basically just a bunch of patterns. Mm -hmm. And so you could really learn that. But if you want crazy novel breakthroughs, I think you're gonna have to understand physics better. So that's gonna be the big one. Like when you hear me say, energy costs are gonna drop to zero, mm -hmm. I'm assuming it begins to understand physics, but that's the big one. The only person I hear talking about it is Yan LeCun. And he's like, kids, it's never going to understand the laws of physics. LLMs are limited. And if he's right about that, then you will hit an asymptote and progress will stall out in a traditional S curve. And so right now we're on the like climb up, but you will eventually hit that top of the curve, whether that wall is a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, don't know.